I'm talking about a series of incidents um, that reveal the racism of the left, um, anti-Semitism against the Jews, uh, attacks on and discrimination against uh, Korean Americans and more broadly against Asian Americans, uh, and then a kind of anti-white uh, prejudice that is, by the way, now becoming the sy systematic racism of our time. Why? Because it's embedded in our history books. And think about it. This is prejudice directed against whites who didn't do the crimes that they're accused of. Uh, the idea here is that the historical crimes of whites are somehow transmuted or passed down to white people today who are found guilty for things that supposedly they're ancestors did. I want to probe the deeper meaning of all this. Now, first of all, it doesn't escape my notice that the groups being attacked, whites, Jews, Asian Americans, are by and large successful groups. And I think they're being attacked for that reason. They're being attacked because they do well. Now, see, when a group does well, uh, it is very uh, infuriating to what you could call the man farthest down. If somebody is down at the bottom, they have to explain to others and to themselves why they're at the bottom. Now, in the old societies, they could easily say, well, I'm at the bottom because, you know, I got the short end of the stick. Uh, I'm at the bottom because the guys at the top all knew somebody. I'm at the bottom because, by and large, I, you know, I was born into the wrong caste or whatever. But, but in this case, as society becomes more open, equal rights under the law, merit, admissions tests, um, by and large now it's much more difficult to explain why you're at the bottom. And so you basically decide, I'm at the bottom because the guys at the top are really wicked. Uh, they're evil. Now you can't say they're stupid because they're obviously smarter than you. If they were stupid, they wouldn't be so successful. So you can't blame the Jews and the Asian Americans for being dumb. But what you can say is that they're corrupt, they're invidious, that their success is because they're so conspiratorial. Uh, and so you notice that anti-Semitism has all of this idea uh, that the Jews are basically conspiratorial, they're diabolical, you can, they don't deal with you straight, and the same prejudice is now being transferred over to Asian Americans. So. This is part of the roots of modern leftist racism. Uh, a racism, as I say, that sort of camouflage as anti-racism. Hey, we're going after the oppressor. Wait a minute. First of all, the whites you're attacking aren't oppressors. You may, may, you may be right about their ancestors, but you're not right about them. The Jews are not oppressors. The Asian Americans aren't oppressors. Who are they oppressing? You're just, uh, you're just going after them because they're disproving uh, your doctrine. They're, you're going after them because they are, despite prejudice, proving that they can succeed. So they're refuting the leftist idea that, hey, if you're a minority, if you're a person of color, you can't move ahead in America. And the Asians go, watch us, hold my beer. Uh, and so that's part of it. Now, that's the outer layer, but not the deeper layer. The de deeper layer that concerns me is this, and that is that the white liberals, the whites on the left, the progressive whites, aren't just prejudiced against successful groups. They also, in a sense, are racist against blacks and Latinos. And to do this takes a little bit of a sort of act of um, putting ourselves in the place of those minorities, something I've tried hard to do. What if I were a black guy or a Latino and I'm listening to what the left is saying? What are they really saying to me? Well, here's what they're saying to me. They're saying to me, Dinesh, you can't succeed because you don't have it. We cannot expect you to do much on your own. In fact, we don't attribute to you any kind of moral agency at all. The only way that you can succeed is if you depend on us. In other words, what they're saying is that the black guy ultimately is saddled with a certain kind of inferiority, that the black guy is, won't make it on his own, that the black guy must turn to the white savior to ex assume responsibility for and deliver the black guy to the promised land. Now, notice the close parallel between what the left is saying now to blacks and, and, and to Latinos and what the old racists, who, by the way, were also Democrats, were saying. Um, here's the difference. The old Democrats used to say to blacks, you're inferior because you're inherently lesser. You're inferior because of, of genes. You're inferior because of biology. You're naturally inferior. What are the modern Democrats and the modern liberals saying? They're saying to blacks, you're inferior because of history. 
you're inferior because you are an historical victim. But in both cases, notice that the old Democrats and the new Democrats agree on this premise of black inferiority. And they also agree on the solution. What is the solution? Depend on Massa. So in the slavery days, uh, says Frederick Douglass, his master used to tell him, Frederick, never worry about the future. Never worry about what you can do on your own. Don't plan for anything. Rely on us. Your happiness, your salvation depends upon trusting the white man. And that is exactly what the Democrats are saying today. They're saying to blacks ultimately, and this is why they hate the conservative blacks. Notice that they treat them with such derogatory venom. They're, they don't hesitate to call them the worst names in the world. Why? Because the great sin of those blacks is to say, we can succeed. We can do it. We have moral agency. We don't need you. And so these people, these whites, turn on them with a rage that has to be seen to be believed, uh, that, that ultimately insults these people, treats them as less than human. In other words, uses the tropes of the old racism against them. Uh, you're stupid, you're ignorant, you're a sellout, you're a traitor. Um, all of this kind of language is used, but the bottom line is that the conservative blacks refuse to accept the premise of black inferiority. They refuse it. And so there is a deep built-in racism on the left. It pervades pretty much everything they do. Um, and as I say, it doesn't just affect the people it's not just directed against successful groups like Jews and Asian Americans and whites. In the end, it also turns on the very people it's supposed to help, basically saying to them, you need us because inferior people like you need superior people like us to save you.